Rub up your engines! Well, it's actually out Toyota's $10,000 pickup truck. It's called the Champ. And it has an entire pickup truck with a two liter engine in it for 10 grand. What a deal. Only problem is you can't buy it in the United States. They make pickup trucks. They call them Hilux. They sell them all over the world. But it turns out in Thailand, where they sell a whole bunch of them, people don't have that much money. And they were trying to sell them for 15 grand. They couldn't sell them. They were too expensive. So now they're selling them for 10 grand. You don't get the sides of the bed, as you can see. It's just a flat bed with no sides. You can add sides and add stuff to it. But the fact that you could get a two liter, four cylinder Toyota truck for $10,000 in other parts of the world, that's telling me, boy, they must be making an awful lot of money selling normal trucks because they cost a heck of a lot more than that. And if they can make these things for 10 grand, sell them in Thailand and other parts of Asia and make a profit, they're not making them to lose money, right? That shows you, hey, there's a lot of wiggle room in these tremendous profit making vehicles if they can actually make a truck, sell it for 10 grand and make a profit. Yeah, it's a shame they're not selling them here. If they did, I'd probably go out and buy one. 10 grand for a pickup truck. Even if I didn't use it once, you park it in the back, use it when you wanted to. It's a Toyota, it'd probably run forever. Shame they're not selling them here. Well, old Elon Musk isn't the richest man in the world anymore, and Toyota is crushing Tesla with sales of hybrid vehicles. Toyota hit the nail on the head. They don't want a full electric only car and be stranded. One of the main reasons that these economists are saying, well, you know, these electric cars, they just cost too much money. People can't afford them. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's some of it. Most of it is just that people don't want it. And even the people that have bought it, a lot of them have traded them in already. They don't want to mess around with it. Look, it hurts. They're getting rid of most of the electric cars that they bought. Nobody wants to rent them. Not only do people not want to buy them, people don't even want to rent them. I mean, if you even want to rent one for a few days, there's not much hope that you can get people to actually buy the stupid things. Now, Elon, oh, he just brushed it all aside saying, well, oh, this hybrid thing is just a phase, just a phase, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a phase like the Ice Age that lasted for hundreds of thousands of years, right? He just doesn't like it that nobody's buying his electric cars anymore. To give you an idea what's happening in the United States, in November of 2023, hybrid vehicle sales were up 99% from the previous year, where the EV share only increased 25% from the previous year. So almost four times as many people are buying hybrids. There's so many different reasons for it, but I find it rather hilarious that now the CV thing is starting to go down and people are saying, oh, let's try hybrids. Yeah, with a little mixture here and there. You can have a plug-in hybrid that can run 50, 60 miles on electricity alone. And you can pretend it's an electric car until it runs out of electricity and then run it on a regular mode. Or you can just get a plain old hybrid that gives it boost in gas mileage, right? Let's face the fact, the gasoline isn't going to disappear any time soon. Although the large rise of electric vehicle manufacturers, you can see it's already starting to go. Companies are going bankrupt. People are giving up with them. Hertz is giving up. Nobody wants to even rent the things. Hey, if people don't want to rent them, what kind of hope does that have for people to buy them, you know? What do they say? Uh, rent it and try it before you buy, right? Well, in this case, people aren't even renting it because they don't even want to buy them. Well, here's one for you. Ethiopia is set to become the first country to ban internal combustion cars. They're going to go for a full out ban. And one of the main reasons they want to do it is because they can't afford it. Ethiopia, unlike other African countries that have oil, they don't have any oil. So they spend over $6 billion a year importing fossil fuels. And they don't want to. So now Ethiopia's ministry says we're banning automobiles to enter Ethiopia unless they're electric vehicles. Now, they don't give you very many details. You know anything about Ethiopia? Well, let's all face the facts that uh, it is known as a nation of scammers. You've watched any of those 60 Minute shows about people there just scamming everybody all over, all over the world, coming places and scamming or scamming them from Ethiopia. I've got many emails, you know. I've got all these millions, but I, I can't access it. Could you send me $5,000 and you can get half of it, you know? Here's what they say. Details are scarce, but a decision has been made that automobiles cannot enter Enter Ethiopia unless they are electric cars. That sounds like a really well thought out plan there, right? It basically comes down to the fact that they don't have money to bring in gasoline and diesel. They're just going to ban them and you can only have an electric car, right? Now, there's no mention of what kind of electric charging infrastructure exists in Ethiopia, but you know, let's face the facts, it's probably not all that good because as it says in the article, the reliability of electricity in some parts still leaves a lot to be desired in Ethiopia. I got the best solution of all. You can only go to Ethiopia if you have an electric car. How about just not going to Ethiopia? Solves the problem entirely.
<laughs> Eubana Schofield says, I have high fuel consumption, especially at idle. I got 2010 Honda CRV. I get good gas mileage okay at cruising, but at idle, the fuel consumption is bad, and my short term fuel trim is minus 5% at idle and low speeds. But then on a the highway, it becomes a zero and has some soot coating when I started. Recently, I had the valve seal replaced, but did not readjust the valve adjustments. Numero uno, start by adjusting the valves. If they're not perfect at idle, it's going to do wacky things. And two, since you have negative 5% at idle, that means computer is subtracting 5% fuel. That means you're getting too much fuel. Odds are, if the valve adjustment doesn't fix it, you've got a problem with the fuel injectors when they're just idling, they have to be perfect to make it idle right. If they're dirty or worn, they're going to go crazy at idle because it has to be perfect at idle. When you're going down highway fast, the engine's moving so fast, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's in, out, in, out, in, out, and it'll run okay even if there's somewhat of a problem, right? But idling is going to be the crap. You're going to get bad gas mileage. If that's the case, ATS fuel cleaner. Put a can in, drive it 250 miles. That can clean the fuel injectors and they're dirty. Hondas have pretty good fuel injectors. A lot of times they can go hundreds of thousands of miles. Now, they may eventually wear out. I mean, your thing's 14 years old. You might have to replace the injectors. But the fact that you say, goes pretty good at highway speeds tells me could be they're just dirty and they dribble at idle but once you get going they stop dribbling so try the cleaner first that can often fix it. 88 you got a forerunner says i have a four amp parasitic draw got a 98 forerunner i have a four amp draw i did a test i pulled each fuse no change i disconnected the alternator no change no lights on the aftermarket wiring system from the terminal brand new battery alternator two years old help there are various things on your vehicle that are not fused. So what you want to do is go to them all and unplug them. Go to your alternator. Take all the wires off. If that drain goes away, it's your alternator. That's not really fused. Go to your starter motor. Take the wires off of it. If it's gone, then that's what it was. You got to check all the wiring parts to see where exactly the problem is. So forget the fuse box because you pulled all the fuses out, right? Get a little schematic and find out where all your fuse boxes and test them all, right? But if not, then what you do is the positive terminal battery has various wires. Take those wires off one at a time. And when you take one off and the draw goes away, trace that wire back to see what it feeds because something that it feeds is doing the draw. It's got to be one of those, but there's a lot of stuff that isn't fused and it won't be tested until you get to the actual wires. And when you unplug that wire, the draw will be gone. Then you just have to trace that wire. And of course, if you don't want to trace the wire the whole way through from the battery back, start at the other end. Like I say, unplug all the wires on the alternator, unplug all the wires on the starter, go through everything until you get it that you have no amp draw because it's a four amp draw is a huge draw. You got a giant short somewhere. It shouldn't be that hard to find once you realize it's an unfused thing that's doing it. Coach 2478 says, I'm losing oil. I got a 2006 Mercury four cylinder. I lose about a quart every 400 miles. It runs fine. There's no blue smoke, no leaks. What do you think? All right. Well, you only got two choices here. <laughs> One is get a PCV valve and pray that fixes it because the PCV valve gets the crankcase vapors and sends them back into the intake to be burnt so they don't pollute the air, right? And that keeps the oil from getting sucked in. So it only sucks vapor, not oil. If that goes bad, you'll suck oil, you burn oil. Pray it's that, because if not, it's your engine and you are burning oil. If you're losing that much oil and you don't see it dripping, it doesn't matter, you don't see smoke coming out of the bat. You often won't see that much smoke. It's a four cylinder. Pull out all the four spark plugs, right? And look at them. And if you see one or more covered in coated burnt carbon, that's where they're burning. Then if you see like one or two cylinders are all coated and the other aren't, it means those two cylinders are worn a lot worse than the other, and the engine's just wearing out. And in that case, just keep adding the oil because the Mercury Milan isn't worth much, and rebuilding an engine is going to cost you four to five times what the car's worth. That as long as it runs, just keep adding oil and change the spark plug as they clog up with burnt oil. Pray it's the PCV valve. Maybe it is. Well, here's a woman who built her driveway, as you can see here, out of waste materials old tires, nuts and bolts, and gravel. And what she did was she bolted the tires all together, then filled them with gravel, and she's got a driveway. Now, it's not a finely finished driveway like one made out of concrete. And she says, you cut the sidewalls of the tire off, you bolt them together, 
and you had gravel. It's the closest thing to free you can get. Well, these people want to get rid of the old tires, and a lot of places don't accept it, so you can find free tires just about anywhere, old worn out ones. So if you're looking for a low maintenance cheap driveway, maybe I get some tires and nuts and bolts and some gravel, and go to it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.